So, uh, sir, I had a doubt in that slot yes. you have given with the timings, right? So, with respect to date, we have to fix whichever date is feasible. How is it? Uh, date is fixed, ma'am. I think it's uh, Monday, Tuesday, and uh, th to, uh, Thursday and Friday. We have given the flexibility. Again, within that time, 3 15, 3, uh, 3 p.m. to 5 15 p.m., you can discuss with any time with the based on the service availability. We have given only a uh, four to five student batch. Again, uh, with that, whatever the 30 30 minutes the gap, uh, 30 30 minutes the plot we have given. In that slot, whatever the queries you people are having in the related to session, related to your start companies and anything, you can discuss with the sir and you get it clarified. Okay. I think it's, uh, is that my screen is visible to you people? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, one of the Cisco Incubator program. I want to, today also I've shared the details in the group. Again, please check. This is a very good opportunity to you people scale up your idea to POC and they will give the seed grant to you people up to 5 lakhs. OK, again from the uh, pre I and all mem all the members should be registered for this competition. Again, top 10 team will be selected for the 5 lakh of the seed grant. From the Raven Nest or Raven University side, all the PA students need to be registered for this program. You circulate this message to, I already shared with the WhatsApp group also. Again, please, uh, if you have any friends is today also not joined also, you discuss with them again, tell them to join this uh, program. Currently in this program, our one of the student batch is already selected for the seed grants. Is they already got the five lakhs amount. Again, for the one more thing, for the uh, Cisco Incubator program, who are all already 10 team, top 10 team is selected. Out of eight members, eight team is incubated with Reva Incubation Center only. Again, it's from the reputed university like VAT, again, IAM, Bangalore. Like those kind of students startup will be incubated from the Cisco incubator only. Again, one of the incubator, eight student team will, out of 10, eight team is incubated here only. We already done the. We already done the uh, uh, screening part. Again, uh, they are incubating soon. Again, this is the best opportunity from the Cisco. And please go further with the this whatever the uh, uh, this application of the seed grant of five lakhs. Again, you will get the industry expert support, R&D support, and how to create the uh, POC model and how to proceed with. The, again, you will get the networking connect. You will be more here in this Cisco incubator. Okay, please, please register. Again, this is the one of the best opportunity. Okay. Uh, sir, I just registered it. Uh, sorry, sorry, Aditya. I just registered it. Okay, it is taking to the uh, kind of platform where uh, there is a dashboard created for us. Yeah. And then we can look into their website. Correct? That's, that's the registration process. Yes, yes, yes. So if you are able to see, you have but it is. Uh, this is the dashboard, right? For students, so I can also opt for it. Uh, currently, we have done for the students only. Again, uh, I will discuss with the consent team if anyone is, uh, uh, I think it's, uh, his team is agreed and uh, you can also register. Yeah, as of now, I just given Reva as the address. Uh, yeah. Hmm. yeah. I think you can directly uh, sign in with the Google. With the Google account, we can move further. Again, they will ask with the, whatever the uh, uh, problem statement and uh, Pitch deck, everything they will ask, and based on the again, they will be again one one to face to face interaction will be there, and based on the selection, again, multiple pitch presentation will be there. Again, one presentation is done, again, uh, you will select it for the part. Okay, and Mr. Aditya, there is one more issue now. See, now with the Vadwani, also have registered. Okay, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Like, today I have 6 30 to 7 30 session, and now we have this session also. So when it falls on the same day, then it's a bit difficult for me to continuously sit for the session. So can we adjust that according to their? Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, parallelly, we have discussed this, sir. Also, again, maybe we are rescheduling that uh, pro, uh, this program with a five to six uh, uh, timing. Again, because Vasvani Foundation case is already starting today also on 28th. Yeah. And further sessions will be uh, will be then 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. 6 p.m. We will allocate. Okay. Okay, so it will be on the same day only. 
the same day uh, it will be on the same day because so many sessions wadwani foundation ka sessions and our session is uh, um, colliding that's why we are making our session is 5 to 6 and 6 to 7 you can attend the wadwani foundation ka program okay thanks yeah yeah okay uh, for the cisco related thing anyone having any queries sir is it only for uh, product based startups or even uh, software based uh, startups sir? software based startups also you can register there is no issues okay sir thank you sir and there was one slot asked uh, saying that assistive technology what kind of assistive technology so i just wrote something which is i am uh, seeking from them but it okay. is reflected in my profile so is it like about our company we have to write what is it Uh, for the assistive technologies, ma'am, for the idea related, whatever the technologies you are using, you can uh, write it in the particular thing, ma'am. Uh, for the Cisco, uh, you are talking about a Cisco, ma'am, or you are what? No, no, Cisco. Yeah. Okay, Cisco is assistive technologies. So completely, whatever the technology you are going to use in your uh, POC or services, whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Other than that, anyone having any uh, problem, any queries? One minute, sir. Will be joining from my desktop. This one only. This photo, right? All right. Uh, let me start with uh, last slide. All right. Is it visible? Is my slide up? Yes, sir. Okay. Can see it. Right. So as I uh, mentioned uh, in my last presentation, that your competitors, uh, how are you going to place yourself? And whenever you are um, submitting your pitch deck or you are doing some kind of uh, you know uh, presenting to the investors, this is how you are supposed to. Put your offerings 
and in terms of the competitor and the first one being the closest to you in terms uh, like right now you can see Bing and Bai are being placed together but if you have Bing has more number of users so you will have them as your first competitor rather than the Bai. So this is a way of uh, presenting your competitors in a better way for your uh, uh, the person to whom you are addressing. Right, and then uh, the SWOT analysis. And I understand that um, many of you would have done this, and you have to keep on working on this uh, SWOT analysis. It's not that in in a one go or maybe in ten goes you really figure out what is your strengths and weaknesses and threats, but you should keep on evolving. Uh, you should keep on evolving this particular template of yours also. Okay and uh, the way you are representing uh, but i uh, as i always suggest never change the primary document always create the different versions for it it can be version 1 1.2 or in terms of date or months that's the safest way of doing the things <coughs> all right so today's session is uh, more about deliberating from where the money actually comes okay um, so whose pocket it is uh, what is the value and the wealth creation? It's not a direct, uh, you know, directly pointing towards the wealth creation in terms of what you are going to do. The point is how much amount of money actually goes in creating that one unit or one service, and then how many units or how many services you are providing in a span of a month or in a uh, in a in a quarterly manner. That's how you are going to have a, per, a calculation of yours, which is very requisite whenever someone is uh, whenever from someone you are asking money for it. And that actually shows uh, or gives the confidence on the other person, whether the bet the person is putting on you, your idea, your startup is a worthwhile for them or not. It might be worthwhile for you, but not might not for them simply because if they don't find the value and wealth creation, they may say, OK, thanks a lot. There are many startups which I know uh, probably they had gone to or not at least 120 doors before actually getting the uh, big ticket for themselves. So uh, and in between, it's not that the template kept on. Uh, they maintained that one template. They kept on modifying based on the interactions. They made a judicious call by saying figuring out that what the other person is asking might be relevant in subsequent interactions or not. So this is the today's quote and uh, the first one is very uh, point blank kind of statement which says business. It's quite simple. It is other people's money. So it's something like whatever we pay as a tax is goes to that government, right? And we don't consider the money which has been given to the government is actually is what actually we get back in terms of different uh, avenues. They put the money mostly right now. The current government is putting a lot of money in developing the uh, road transportation and other features uh, uh, based on their mandates. So money is there in every given aspect, whether it's a business or functioning as a government. The second clause is very much uh, the way actually a person will perceive whether you are the right person to make that money into a bigger fold. OK, so no business in the world has ever made more money with poorer management. So when you are looking for money from someone, they will actually want to see how you are managing your money, uh, how well calculated you are, uh, in terms of a single unit or single service that you are providing, what is the uh, cost involved in it? Cost means if you are if the if you are making a cake which requires five six ingredients, you have figured out what is the cost of each ingredient, how much amount of time has been put, which you convert into terms of rupees, a number you are giving, and if you are shipping it to someone using Swiggy or you have your own mode of uh, transporting it, you are adding up. So that is the actual cost that you have put and then a price. 
so that price and the cost, the whatever is between it, uh, whatever leftover is, is actually called as the margin. So what is your margin is what actually tells you are able to manage your whole system. Let's say if you have a uh, let's say you have a gold stocking being there in so that you have to put your items in a gold stock. Are you uh, are you paying a rent for it? Those all calculation matters a lot and that's what is management all about. Right, so. Let's have a little more. Uh, you know, uh, I will be going back and forth just to keep on reminding you that you are in a pre incubation stage. That means right now you are in the formation stage where you have a mission vision and based on that you are coming up with a strategy. So most of you are in either minus two or minus one and someone is actually trying to put a foothold on stage of zero. OK, stage of zero I will consider not just registering your company, uh, but you your team has got to the level where you are trying to come up with the proof of concept. OK, a proof of concept means. Uh, as it's mentioned that you have figured out what is the minimal requirement to get that product done or the service given. Why this slide is important is to. Figure out and tell what kind of management is required in each given step. Because when you are in my minus two stage, the way you are dealing your team as well as the money is different. And the moment you are going into minus one, that stage again, the way you are handling your team and the money changes. So keeping this in mind, you have to understand the need of money varies from each stage to other stage. And this is what actually when you are asking a money to someone, they actually look what particular stage you are in. Sometimes it's that you consider that you are at stage two, but technically you are not even at zero. Many instances are there where people claim that I have an idea. I have uh, downloaded this many uh, data, but it is somebody else data, right? You have not generated that data. Thousand data is for that company's product for that whatever they have launched in that given year. The geographical location is different. You cannot extrapolate for your own scenario. So that means until unless you don't do anything on your own to tell that your product or service is fitting into the market or you have not validated it, you cannot claim that you have gone into a, a, a stage one or move further to it. So. Uh, where is the money to start? OK, so as you can clearly see here, I have put number of options of getting money. The uh, credit cards, many of the where you are taking the money in advance. That's why I said credit card, but if you are putting your own money, that will be called something different. There is something called as government institutional grants. Banks and other loans are there, institutional seed funds, family and friends, venture capital and angel investors. So uh, I ask three of you uh, to put your own choices and turn on your speaker and answer. Um, so Radhika ji, uh, I will ask you to first tell what is your preference of asking money for your startup. Am I audible or not? OK, I did not uh, on the audio. Yeah, OK. Uh, institutional seed funds and angel investors. Institutional seed funds and angel investors. OK, OK, second person. Um, uh, any other person wants to turn on and tell? Turn on the mic. What is this? Yeah, uh, I would say uh, anything if they don't ask equity in the company. OK, and who is this online? Uh, I'm Ajin. OK, Ajin. OK, free money. Oh, you are looking for free money. OK, next. 
uh i'll start with like seed funds my own seed fund and also the friends and family next reference to friends and family wow you are so lucky that you have got friends and family who are willing to contribute money anyone else wants to chip in uh, probably so there is another resource of funding uh, this crowd funded uh, projects like for uh, social initiatives mm-hmm. that also yeah. could be. okay Uh, how many years? Yeah, sorry. Continue. Yeah, it's not really viable like for for-profit companies, but uh, just an option. Absolutely right. Yeah, uh, I'll just try to touch it upon in probably another two or three slide, third slide from now onwards. Any other person wants to add up why people are not talking about bank and other loans? Government or uh, institutional banks or institutional seed funds or institutional seed funds. Okay, who was this person last who spoke? Sir, I am Raghavendra. Okay, Raghavendra. Okay, right. So let me uh, put uh, this all modes of getting money into a preferable kind of thing, where uh, you should actually look for money first and foremost. As Ajin said, uh, I really don't want uh, to give equity, and that's a right thought. as an uh, founder that you have to have soft money when i say soft money means there is no obligations of returning back the money all that is required is to tell that look this is what i want the money for and let me prove that i am doing it in the right direction so like karnataka's uh, elevate grant is a government grant and it's a soft money kind of it uh if your project is something really really interesting for uh, melinda gates foundation and that kind of places where typically they will mention as grant okay there is a change in people the word uh, when they start to use the word as grant and then seed grant okay there is nothing called a seed grant whenever a grant comes means it's free of equity second i will put friends and family simply because um, it's not necessary that everyone requires at least uh, 25 cr or even even if like 20 lakhs to do a proof of concept yeah if you are doing a proof of concept something which is between you know 1 lakh to 5 lakhs and you your family and friends are able to support you in that uh, that more well and good go for that but then until unless your family doesn't uh, put a clause of you know or a friend puts a clause of like uh, 4% uh, invest uh, interest being there then uh, uh, you should uh, say okay i will come back to you at a later stage okay never say no be thankful for them to even at least considering you uh, considering that you and your idea has some word i have seen many instances where um, uh, where a person says i am doing a startup and okay 40% to 60% of their friends okay done probably he or she is going to ask me money in coming years and they back off being friends with you okay Se- second is institutional seed funds the moment the word seed comes or the fund comes it's uh, you have to keep it in mind it's always with the equity part okay now when we talk about equity they don't give money to an individual okay the seed fund is always given after a company has been incorporated or it is called as pre seed like even if you are asking money from let's say uh, reva university right now it will be like a pre seed money uh, kind of thing to allow you to grow and show your proof of concept so uh, there are many uh, uh, incubation centers uh, uh, startup india portal has many of the uh, seed fund rounds so there you should have formed a company and then continue with it uh many times having personal savings is uh, is the other way of having the money put into the company and this happens only when if you have gone into done some uh, work and uh, you have collected some amount of resource so that when you do a startup you are able to sustain and you are able to understand that even your family if it is there Uh, you are not dependent on someone or someone is not dependent on you you can put your own money and take the risk and many times many of these angel investors and venture capitalists look whether you have actually put some money that you have actually put some skin in the game 
or you're just trying out. So if you are not, uh, you, you guys are really in a very young stage of your life, but those who are already gone into like 30 or 30 plus and they are doing it, many times they look into whether you have put your own money into the startup or not. Or else if your startup has idea has worked little bit and you really think the traction or the growth of the company is going to more, then, then you can ask for bank loans and others. Angel investors are people who have got deep pockets and they are they if they like your idea, even if there is uh, lack of some clarity in how you are going to generate revenue, they can also contribute money as well as um, say, look, I am putting money. Let me be a co-founder with you so that my knowledge and experience will take you further. Venture capital is when you are looking for a huge capital and that's the order I actually feel is the right order to ask money. OK. And how this money is given? Well, this money is given in terms of either bootstrapping. That is uh, you are using your own money without any equity friend. Friends are giving you money and then uh, you are putting into the account or you are accountable somewhere uh, in terms of uh, let's say you are uh, accountable no, for if you are able to account the money as the company then you are putting the money what they are giving in the company indirectly not directly into the company account okay they are routing money to you and you as a director putting the money why i'm saying this particular part is that if you are asking someone to put money in your company, then there are so many other legal complications will arise. Why that money was put by that X person who has got nothing to do with the company until unless someone is taking a service for which you are uh, charging them, right? So if you're taking money from someone or you, are, you yourself are putting some money into the company, do it through your own uh, personal account. OK, and if you are once you are the director of company, once the money has been transferred into the company's account or the LLP's account, that transaction is called as director's loan. OK, just keep it a point. This these types of terms will come when you are um, you have to submit your financial statements. Okay? Sir, can you repeat the director's loan part? OK, so if you are putting your own money, from your own bank account to the company account or you have borrowed money from any family person or a friend ask them to put money into your account and then only you transfer into the company account okay and as we all know whenever a transaction is done online there is a note that you have to put and in that note you have to put it's a director's loan let's say there are three people who are company's directors one of the person is putting money. So that time you have to put director's loan and dash Ajin. Or if it is uh, me, then I will put director's loan dash Shrina. So that the CA, CS or the auditors, when they look into the balance sheet, they understand this money is coming from the director. The director is putting their own money for the uh, upliftment of the company or utilization. If the third party or some other one is putting money, the questions will arise. OK, and otherwise if I am as a friend, I am putting directly into the company. Later on, I will come and claim. Look, I have put the money directly into your company. I am I'm going to ask you shares. OK, that kind of complications will arise at your pre I or incubation stage. Am I uh, clear with that? Yes, and now I got it. Yeah. OK, fantastic. Yeah, so that's a pure way calling as bootstrapping. And then when you are borrowing money or uh, you are getting money from a person directly into a company as an investment, then it is called based on the shares of the company. It will be called as uh, equity financing and that is coming along with a co-ownership. OK. Mostly when it's uh, a person, not the institutional. Institutional people will ask just the share, okay? And sometimes institution will say that, okay, we will ask someone to be part of the company as a director. So they will have some uh, a role to uh, play in the decision making that is called as executive director, okay? 
uh, okay, uh, that actually reminds me. No, the number of people in the company who are directors, they cannot be more than 65 years old. Okay, uh, so that uh, there are some uh, uh, company acts which clearly has this kind of clauses being there. So your CA will clearly tell if you think someone is uh, about 65 or 70 planning to uh, put money and want to be director in the company, they will probably say, okay, let them be shareholders rather than being director in the company. OK, so the, the person who is coming uh, with equity financing will have this kind of uh, roles to take care that they will also be participating because they are putting money as well as they will be having profit, profit sharing. And who are they? The, one is uh, angel investor. They are deep pocketed people and uh, they will ask for equity or convertible debt. So uh, next uh, talk is going to buy a CA or CS that time you can note down these kind of phrases and question them what it actually means to uh, take money uh, in terms of equity, convertible uh, debentures or any instruments. Those kind of words you have to note down and ask them for clarification. And the investment can be done in, in terms of a one time or it can be a phased kind of thing. And remember, whenever they put money in the company, they will ask you to have a valuation of your company. So when a valuation is done, let's say you are putting uh, 1 lakh, 5 lakhs or 10 lakhs and uh, you have got 10,000 shares or 50,000 shares saying each share is of this particular rupee value. That's the actual uh, uh, cost price of the shares. But the moment you are going to say I'm coming with the product and this will lead to come uh, raise the worth of the company, let's say it's starting from 5 lakhs i think after uh, uh, two three years or this much work done our company's valuation will turn into 10 lakhs from 5 lakhs to 10 lakhs that time they will ask how much amount of shares you want to give so there are valuations of two three different types one valuation is done when you are looking for investment second valuation is done uh, when you are really trying to sell off your company at the time different valuation methods are there or different uh, based on the purpose for which a money is being raised or money is to be taken. OK, so there are different valuation in processes. So you can talk to the CACS in terms of how the valuations are done when in the next session. <clears throat> Second is the venture capitalist where it's a large sum of money. So many times one person doesn't have. So what they do, they um, 10, 15 people collect together like, OK, let me put two CR and then 10 people are there, 20 CR is been put and then one person <coughs> has the call over it and then they, the money has been put. Again, it can be in a one time or a phased manner. And then it will be convertible instruments where it's a preferential shares or convertible debentures. Again, note on this thing and ask the CA or the CS next time when they come. Please be online. I'll get some water. <coughs> Otherwise, there are other methods of having debt financing like loans from bank and non-banking financial companies and BFCs where it is based on interest and uh, most of the time uh, your company should have got some traction and based on your assets or uh, based on mortgaging kind of thing, the monies are borrowed from these following methods. External, external uh, commercial borrowing is there. Uh, once your company has been formed, you actually register yourself as a, a micro and small enterprises, okay, MSMEs. So there are different uh, ways MSMEs are being uh, enabled by company uh, uh, government. There's something called as a mudra loan, uh, where uh, they say within 59, uh, within one hour, 
uh, 1.5 lakhs of money can be released to the uh, uh, small companies. That kind of facilities are being provided by government. And there is something called as a venture debt. And as uh, uh, Vivian was talking about uh, crowd funding, it actually comes under this particular type of financing where uh, you collect a lot of money from the crowd based on your own uh, uh, proposal to them. And uh, that leads to collect a good amount of corpus to show what kind of uh, service or a product you are going to showcase. Yeah. So this is how the money is given to startups. And uh, let me break it up in, in terms of the money which is being taken up, right? Uh, and different stages of it. Uh, in lakhs or less than that. And seed also is between uh, the lower to upper range of lakhs. And then the moment it's going into uh, incomes of uh, crores, then it turns into a series A, B, and C, and D. So here it is the money why it is being utilized in a seed or a pre seed. It is for a proof of concept and hiring people. Okay. Uh, most of the money, uh, if if it's a prototype that you are developing uh, in terms of a product, you are going to showcase and you require few people to do it, right? And then when we talk about series A, something where you have actually started to have some revenue growth and the money what you are looking for is actually to uh, enhance the development process, uh, running the operations, branding and marketing. And this is like after you have some kind of traction being done, okay? And series B is like you mainly look it for growth and hiring and expanding. And sometimes what happens, uh, you start to then buy more of the businesses, which so that you are making your presence in, uh, uh, in the value chains in a different different segments. OK, let's say if Dunzo uh, has expanded uh, many things. In fact, today I saw that uh, Airtel, Airtel app is now saying you, they, you can buy uh, uh, medicines through their app. OK, we know there is there are companies like Phar Pharmacy and others, but why? Why Airtel is also coming? Because probably they would have bought up some startups, small startups, and they thought, OK, let's have one more vertical to generate more revenue. OK, and uh, well, Series C is something like where you really want to do a large scale expansions, acquiring businesses. So one thing you have to understand is whatever business you are doing or startup you are doing if you if you want to start create something and then sell it off the moment the word sell it off comes it is called as an exit okay either the whole company is being taken up by other company so they want to expand their uh, you know uh, value chain or else you say, OK, I have developed this particular product and this is what I want to completely give it off. Or I give it off for five years. OK, so that kind of business is also possible. So you have to see whenever in a statement or a document, if say they ask you what is your exit plan? So that means how you really think that the product what you're developing up till when you are going to. So you have developed the product and then you really think you want to manufacture and sell it or you say, OK, I am done with my product making. I can give it as the product worked out to some other company so that the company will put their label over it. So it is called as white labeling. So there are uh, many companies which will make a product. Give it to some other company which are branding it. They will put their label and go off. So they they have a huge network that allows them to put your product out there. OK, without mentioning that it is coming from you or many times uh, nobody gets to know from whom that product was made. Here the royalty part comes OK, or you say this many units when you are selling, I really want this much percentage of the profit you have done. So depending upon the kind of business you are into, you have to see whether they are taking the uh, rights of your patent or the product uh, just to keep you away from giving a competition. So you have to be very careful. Your CA and the lawyers will allow you to say that. Look, 
if this person is just trying to avoid your product to be bought over by his or her competitor so you have to put a you know a fine over it i am giving this to you and in uh, and we expect by uh, 200 uh, by uh, by 2 years you are going to have 200 sales being done if not done this is the particular amount of money you are supposed to give it so these things you have to keep it in mind okay when someone buys or takes the um, services or the sorry uh, the patent from you these things you have to keep it in mind okay why i am bringing this slide again so that you have to have your budgeting this is what i had put uh, in one of the documents which i asked you to fill that what is the minimal uh uh cost of the unit or service you have to do a calculation of it okay and that calculations will keep on varying from each stage to another stage now what has been seen is that the amount of money influx in terms of uh, putting money into the startups have seen a tremendous change in the last few years and now it has gone uh, much more than uh, mentioned in 2018 like if it is uh, seed money is 1.85 and series c is like 2.3 um, i'm pretty sure that seed money has now gone into 2.5 kind of range post covid it has gone up a lot okay i said post covid yeah okay so uh, let me escape uh, from this and let me zoom it further yeah so so what happens uh, when you are in an idea stage i am typically showing in terms of your uh, share holding okay let me put it in that way so when a company is started the founders will have 100% share it can be 1% it can be 7% what however number it is and you have to clearly see as in as the uh, number of people keep on increasing and the money starts to come into the company the founders percentage will keep on reducing okay uh, can i have it in a better way okay in a co-founder stage okay let me sh show this slide first a section of it idea stage co-founder stage families are putting money seed round of money and then you are going to oops i ran little fast series a and series or ipo level okay that's fine uh, let me okay yeah this is worth noting 100% of nothing is like 100% of shares of your startup and 17% of big company actually means a lot in terms of the rupees or dollars you want to put into so here you can see uh, as and as the growth happens the founders uh, like the co-founder has come the 50% is going to the co-founder and when additional people are putting money you are giving your shares their option pools option pools goes to your employees uh, esops it is called and I, you can clearly see that as and as number of people are coming in uh the founders value in numbers of shares actually starts to dwindle so let's say if it is going into a final stage of that you are going into an ipo uh so you will have just 17% of the just 17% of uh, uh 15 million uh, worth of company and you can clearly see how is the percentage you have shared with others so here you can clearly see uh, the founders in totality are very much close to vc okay this is how it this is a nice uh, you know uh, sharing pie among people uh, where it's uh, 30% is with, with the vc and you remember whenever the okay. share sorry to interrupt yeah the full form of vc venture capitalists at the venture capital yeah so remember one thing whenever a money is been put the founders are not giving their shares remember this 
whenever a person is or an entity is putting money, you are supposed to carve out shares. OK, so let's say uh, X person or the institutional is going to put money. Let's say after valuation of company, you say, OK, uh, I want to give you 500 shares for uh, 50 lakhs that will give you back calculation. That was the valuation of your company. You the founders are not giving their 500 shares OK out of uh, 5000 5000. You are supposed to create fresh shares for them. So that way what happens the founders shares is going to change, but the percentage will be very slowly coming down. If the founder is giving their shares, the percentage will start to fall faster. OK, so carving out new shares is the right way to do. And that's how it is mentioned even in the uh, Companies Act. OK, all right. Oops, it goes to the first. Uh, sir, one question here. Yeah. Uh, so in the beginning stage, <clears throat> when we are adding the co-founders, Mm -hmm. And uh, can we have a clause saying that, you know, no need to spend money, but you can be part of a work. So like that also we can deal with them instead of asking them to invest money. Uh, no, uh, so I couldn't they, get your question. Yeah, no, like if, if I had two people as a co-founder, mm -hmm. but whereas I'm not giving uh, uh, them a task to invest money into that, but okay. work wise they will support. Is that? possible or it should be like equally with the finance we have to distribute right. okay so the thing what you have brought up is actually part of next session which is oh. called as founders agreement okay where uh, the founders have to figure out how they, how they are justifying their percentage of shares in the company are they working are they providing money but not working are they are doing both if they are doing both how much is what done by whom? And lastly, who will be the person to represent as the CEO or uh, um, what is the other? <laughs> I forgot. Uh, managing director. OK, so th that founders agreement is editable. OK, it's a live document which can be edited based on the uh, uh, year situations or it's, it's, it will let you know how you are going to run your company or manage it. And that's what actually the uh, uh, angel investors and VCs will look how you are managing your whole team as for money part as well as the work part. OK. Yes, sir. Understood. OK, so you guys have understood probably uh, even if not understood, at least uh, remember these words. Uh, which I have told till now in terms of investment, in terms of uh, the financing part, in terms of uh, director's loan, in terms of uh, uh, the founder's agreement, the clauses which come into it. Let's say the founder's agreement actually tells, look, someone has worked for this many years and after two years, the other person says, look, I have other commitment coming into my life or my family people doesn't want me to work here. OK, I was having 40 percent stake here. Mm, I'm fine with 10% uh, uh, of the stake in the company. Remaining can be given back to the company and things like that. OK, those kind of documentations allows you as well as uh, the unknown person who is coming as angel investor or a VC understands that you have kept the work as a priority and you have figured out how to keep it, you know, in a win-win uh, situation for all. And that's what a founder agree, founders agreement helps a lot. Most of the time, I have actually seen both the examples where uh, because of the founders agreement, one person has moved out. The remaining three are still friends with the other person and they are maintaining cordial relations. And I've seen many other examples where the company also fails off and their friendship is also failed off. OK. OK, so the mantra today is to calculate the unit price. As I emphasized at the start, what is actually cost and price to allow the investor or the funding person to know what is the margin of profit for you. Which I mentioned already and third is unit sales. So it should be like uh, in a given time frame, how many units are you going to sell? OK, how much is the market for it? That's how actually uh, the uh, angel investors and VCs figure out the potential 
of you being sustainable in the market. And remember one more thing, whenever these angel investors or VCs come, they shouldn't come just only with the money. Exactly. They should actually contribute in the growth of your company also. So they shouldn't be like, OK, after four months checking, well, uh, where is the money? Where is the money? No, you don't want people like that. You should have people who said, OK, let's work together. I have this network. I will allow you to have a bigger, you know, uh, access to the market. That kind of angel investor, that kind of VCs are the right people for you to progress further. OK, I think we have got some five minutes. Uh, so let me uh, tell you a small journey which is pending since the day one or the orientation day. So here you see actually a B2B product, OK, which is a spring which technically we will never buy. OK, it goes to the person in the garage who fixes it for you and they charge a service charge for you. OK, so this is not a B2B to B2C. It's a directly B2B to B. That's it. Nothing more than that. But here is one example which is very, very interesting journey of it. Uh, this this is something like uh, uh, six inch to seven inch kind of instrument. Can anyone tell or uh, have clue what kind of instrument is this? And for what purpose it is utilized? You can open up mic and just uh, you can uh, throw your uh, clues what you have in your head. So it's like a plug in clamp where we can fix to a wall. Uh, or any metal sheet and then that hole can be used for tying something. <laughs> that's okay. what I can this. OK, yeah, that's a first look of it. Yeah, continue. Who else? Sir, I think uh, use it in cardboards like uh, uh, pads, examination pads. Ah, there is okay. one uh, there now. There. Right, right, right. So you see two of the hooks being there where something can be fixed. OK, right. Right, so it Anything, be a furniture uh, clamp. Furniture clamp, but in furniture clamp, you should have uh, sharp bends and edges, and the that bending is come uh, bending comes usually in the center to give equal weight to both the ends. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, let me give its name at least. To probably that might give you a hint. This is called as church key opener. Have you ever heard this name? No, sir. Anyone? No, sir. No. no, OK. OK, probably it should give a hint by the next image. So this church key opener is actually a can opener. OK, now uh, historically I tried a le level best. There are people who are have put questions to check. Why it is called as a church key opener? OK, uh, you it could have been something else. So you can clearly see that, you know, this particular region goes here to open the can. So in 18, uh, 1850s or that time onwards, the tin cans came into picture for, you know, packing and transporting in uh, uh, liquid items. And uh, by uh, late 1860s, uh, stainless steel and other uh, you know packaging material came into picture and to open up that was a problem okay so then uh, tin also came into picture and by by whole this process uh, they figured out that you can have a cutter kind of thing which can open it up okay so this was the general thing up till 1935s or subsequently to it and this is the modern most modern way of opening a can so you can clearly see it's a, such a beautiful outcome converting something like this six inch kind of thing turning into something like a two or three four centimeter uh, you know kind of part coming into it so you can clearly see this is a can can end is there there is a small ring which allows you to put a straw or allows the tab to pull and there's a small rivet which keeps it in its place and the small beading and nose and a tear line, which is something like a thinner region, which allows with the pressure tip to cut at the giver region. 
a nice lip kind of thing comes once it's been teared. So the journey of it it's been a very wonderful story, OK? So this person, Mr. Phrase, uh, moved to uh, Dayton in 19 uh, something like, uh, I think, 40s. And then in nine years, he himself started his own company called as uh, Dayton Reliable Tools and Manufacturing Company. And he didn't make it immediately. Something happened in 1959. In 1959, he had taken his family and friends on a trip outside the city. And then he forgot to take this churn key opener. And being a person, he as a from a tool company, he had to use his, uh, you know, uh, break, uh, break down uh, tools of the car to open the can because he was not carrying it. So that made him to find the problem okay remember he is a tool making guy who encountered a problem and understood what's the problem that you are supposed to carry it separately so he thought of something which is already present on a can and then he actually designed it had his uh, prototype ready and by 1962 when he filed his patent 40% of the industries had already taken up his product and the product was not as refined what we are seeing right now. Earlier product didn't have a small bead here. So it was tearing off totally coming out from the can and what people were doing, they were using that as to plug in to the parking lot slaughter machine, slot machine so that they were spoiling it. So then he devised out with further more uh, innovative kind of uh, pull tab or a push tab. Those kind of patents are there. Lot many are there. And by the time his patent was granted in 1967, 70% of all the industries using which metal? Can you guess which metal industry he would have sold it? Anyone who's using uh, cans can answer that. Anyone? Aluminium, sir. Aluminium. 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 Fantastic. Tin. So, tin, okay. So here he was very, uh, see, he understood the market. So he sold his patent to the largest manufacturers of aluminum can in US. Okay. And what he had said that is, you know, uh, that each can that is made, he requires probably 10 penny or something like that. 10 penny for one. And just imagine how many cans are being made in that one year, even if let's say 40% in 1962 or 1963, if 40% of the products uh, are being made, just imagine how much money he would have made. Well, uh, 1985 is the uh, final uh, kind of product which has been seen here came to the final kind of thing and that's been there for ages now. So, so he didn't go into manufacturing industry. OK, let me come up with a manufacturing industry. He simply understood that it's better to take your tech. I develop the tech and give it over to someone or else make a collaboration with someone who to whom it is going to be useful. Say that, OK, look, I am developing this tech. I will be interested that if you are willing to contribute or put your money. Let us develop it together and when the final product is out, we will give it to you and we will share some royalties out of it. So this is what I wanted to uh, tell as a story that it's not necessary that you are you are uh, going from the start to end of a value chain. It's possible that you can stick to a small section of the value chain and you can earn revenues. The number matters a lot. OK. The aluminum can makers are much more than the tin can makers. That kind of uh, call has to be made by your own experiences. All right, so uh, this is where I end today's uh, uh, lecture. Any questions? I am ready to answer it. It was clear, sir. We need okay. to switch to Vadwani also now. <laughs> okay, okay, done, done, done. Let, let me end it off. Okay, take care. Bye.
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That was good. The story, the final story was too good. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.